So this is ExtraCast on video, and I don't even kind of know where to begin. It's been the real the real, the real ExtraCast. It's been, what, yes. four years? The, the true ExtraCast, yes. Four years oh. since we've done a podcast. I was thinking there's something in the book of ExtraCast somewhere where if someone takes our name, we must rejoin, respawn to reclaim it. <laughs> yes, and yeah. he's referring to... Um, there is an Exercast Horror podcast now, like that's never been done before, apparently. It's on YouTube and Twitch, um, but it's, it's, when I found them on Twitter, it's funny because essentially they had to make their, their username at Exercast Duck because Exercast is taken. Might have thought to like look into it or Google search it because the first thing it comes up on when you Google search ExtraCast is my Twitter account and then the website. Mm-hmm. So they just try the jacket pretty much, right? I guess mm-hmm. so. Well, they, they could have been like, hey, this is kind of a clever name. Oh shit, someone's already got it. Um, oh, but they haven't made a show. Maybe it'll be more original. And it's funny because essentially when they posted their first episode, <clears throat> we were already talking about coming back. That's what I mean. It's like a bat signal. How many episodes deep are they? Four. Four? Maybe three. Something like that. Oh. But they also haven't recorded an episode in a month. So so do we still get seniority over them, even though we took a four-year hiatus? Oh, I mean, I'm, I think, I'm writing up the cease and desist anyway and having my uh, attorney send it over. Yeah. Because I know, like, when, when ExtraCast first started, there was blue ExtraCast, right? Wasn't that like an anime thing? It was an anime podcast. And and what isn't, like, Blue Exorcast, isn't that the actual title of an anime? Blue Exorcist. I okay. thought it was Blue Exorcast. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't well, know. Uh, I, Blue Exorcist back, is the anime. They may have turned it into cast because of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'd actually... back at the Vince today, so... I'd actually seen that on um, Apple's podcasts. But, of course, yeah. this is on YouTube and not on... Apple Podcast or Stitcher or whatever the hell else plays podcasts now. Because yeah. YouTube is, is the place to be now. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, the two of us. I mean, if need be, you can YouTube always isolate the audio. <laughs> but because um, we had kicked around the idea of uploading all of the old shows onto YouTube, which is, I think, 132 previous episodes. And, a but a lot of those, like Eli and I had played music on, and those will get taken down pretty quick on YouTube. Not necessarily. They may just get demonetized. Well, I'm not in the. Not like we're really trying to monetize this. Yeah. yeah. So, like all the zombies don't podcast stuff that I uploaded it had music in it. It just got demonetized. I never got even a strike on them. But you also didn't make any money, did you? I wasn't trying to make money, though. Although, That's right. I'm close to being able to make money on YouTube now, though. Close. This close. Yep. So, Chuck has been doing um, Zombies Don't Run on YouTube, and more so recently than in the previous years, but he's still pumping out some videos. Yeah. I feel like, like these days, if you're going to do anything, the video is probably the way to go, because I can write a million reviews. On the website, nobody ever comments on them, but then usually they get to YouTube at least get a little bit. Of and I just some engagement. Uh, I just chime in to tell you your camera looks bad or something. Always. That's what I'm here for. So uh, and you went to the, you you went down the path of tech reviews. I did. Yeah, I was going to let James talk about what he's been doing the past four years, but um, since Chuck so kind of put it there, it's yeah, a good segue. Go with it. I've been doing uh, tech reviews on YouTube for a little over two years now, and uh, it's going all right. I'm kind of burnt out on it, though, just kind of like how I got burnt out on Exercast before, because I've got companies being like, oh, hey, here's a power bank, here's a charger, here's a pair of headphones, which free headphones are awesome, but... That's a long one. Come on, 
I honestly couldn't hear a thing just now for a minute, not just the elevator wise. So I'll get right back to what I've been doing, but that uh, in James's condo building, there is a elevator. Elevator. He, he shares a wall with it. So get used to that. <laughs> I might try and figure out some additional place I can move to, but I don't know that it's going to necessarily make anything that much better. So, eh, whatever works. But yeah, that's pretty much what I've been on the past two years. I had another kid. I had one. My son was born during while we were doing ExtraCast, and that's uh, essentially right around that time is when Chuck joined me full-time, and then a few months later, James jumped on board full-time. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's been about it. I work and I have kids and a wife and I'm burnt out on making tech reviews because companies are sending me things and demanding that I review them in an insanely fast period of time. How uh, was the movie world? I mean... And that's, that's why I got burnt out on Exercast because I got sent like 20 movies a month. Just like you're getting, Chuck, and, and but like, I didn't want to watch 15 of them, and then they were terrible, yeah. and I was oh, obligated no. to, I was obligated to review them. I mean, the whole reason why what I've done since then is basically I hadn't reviewed that much at the time I was doing Exacast. I really had stopped reviewing before then because I got burned out from watching what they kept sending me when I was writing reviews. So I just kind of tossed the movie I was watching and barely wrote again for a while. Uh, about a year or so ago, I tried to pick back up a blog spot. It's technically still running. Or it's a WordPress, not Blogspot. Technically, it's still running. I do it when I have the time. Otherwise, um, wife and I moved to our own condo. Uh, that's been really about it. I'm woefully far behind on a lot of stuff that came out in big theaters. But you follow what you follow, you find what you find, things like that. Oh, and, and you're the, you're the only job. one of us with a real job, so. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I was going to say. You know, so you've got I, that yes, one. For I, you. I think yep. my website has crashed three times since we last did a podcast. The one time was bad. Yeah, it's, it's bad every time. It's just bad in different ways. For some reason, you know, there's websites that's been around for years with no problem, but mine overloads the servers every now and then for some reason. It's all, it's all mean, the traffic coming to it. Yeah. Of course. All the traffic. And besides, I mean, the website where they now have all the old reviews that I had, that website just decides every so often. I don't know if the two guys who run it just forget to pay the bill or something, but at least twice in like the last six months, the website's just been down. Back, back it <laughs> so, up. Back it up on Blogger or WordPress. To be honest, I already almost considered doing it. I was trying to ask him, hey, are you guys just not doing it anymore? Because I'll be more than willing to rewrite my reviews again. Uh, this time, they may uh, change opinion. I, in many I of those cases, change my opinion on some stuff. My thing is when they keep changing over the, um, they changed from what it once was, which was best horror movies, to uh, want to say horror freak news. And when they did that, they moved everything over, and I still have the bylines, but all of the posts say by Matt, who was the guy who ran the uh, the website. Plus, I can't remember what movie it was, but I was trying to find my reviews at one point. And there's some reviews apparently on the website that are just under my name that I didn't do. So, so I got my own issues with their website. So apart from their crappy ass searching. So the way we're going to kind of do ExtraCast is a little bit different now because um, we're older and we don't really have time to do a show like every Friday night like we were doing. So we're going to record like we're recording now. But we're going to record two episodes right now. And next week we're going to record like two episodes. And then that's going to give us a week free, essentially. We're, we're on the WWE uh, taping schedule right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except we don't have Vicky Cross ordering his pizza. Yeah. Which, so, by the way, I want to point out we're doing this and I'm missing AEW tonight for this. For this. You're what now? Missing He's AEW. Missing AEW. But I can oh, always watch it later, though. I can watch it later. Yeah, you can watch it free tomorrow, pal. It's fine. Just stay off Twitter. You won't get any spoilers. 
Yeah, right. Well, I also would like to point out that uh, four years ago when you said that, you would never have said AEW. No. Like your first thought would have been NXT. Yeah. You right. know, and you're not even going to NXT, you're going to AEW immediately. There's too much wrestling now. <laughs> Carrot, my son Carrick has like slowly died off on watching it. Like every once in a while, he's like, "Can we watch Raw?" And it'll be like Thursday, like, like this week or last week, buddy. Which one do you want to watch? Because I haven't DVR'd. <laughs> so I don't know what the hell is going on in wrestling, but um, I try to keep up on AEW for the most part. Like, I did watch oh. Code Orange's performance from NXT TakeOver, but I didn't watch NXT TakeOver. Should I know who they are? <laughs> now, what now? Should, should I, I know believe he said he didn't know who they are. Um, they are a hardcore band from Pittsburgh, just right up from me. And they used to be called Code Orange Kids. They released, I think, four albums. And then this they just released... A, Another album. So three albums ago, they dropped the kids, became Code Orange, and um, Jacob Bannon from Converge started doing their production. Got a little bit heavier, um, some member changes, and they were the first live act on NXT um, TakeOver um, two years ago. The, uh, they performed, they opened the show, and then they also played... Alistair Black's opening theme song and the singer from Incendiary came out and did the vocals because Incendiary does his theme. Well, they seem to be going out of their way to mean mug the camera at in your house. I don't know. Better than popular, right? <laughs> so that's, that. I mean, we just kind of went AWOL there on what, all, what we were talking about, but that's kind of what we're doing with ExtraCast. Um, so, something that we've all been talking about it off and on, some way or another. Yeah. You know. So, something may be happening, and like that's major in the horror world, and we may not get to it for two episodes because that's pre-recorded, essentially. So, <laughs> well, news the way, and the way this year has been, we could be missing a lot within that week's time. Well, W asked me earlier today, do I have any news? And I said, I'm planning to just go on and go, well, Mark Rooney's on fire. Back to you. <laughs> that's that's it. Like, I thought this <laughs> quarantine and all that, I thought this was a great time for ExtraCast to come back. And then when it's finally coming back, everything's, like, on fire and covered in shit. <laughs> I don't know. Like, people are doing terrible things. And people that we're not going to get into it or say any names, but people that we never would have thought would do terrible things are doing terrible things. He kind of looked like someone that would do terrible things, I think. <laughs> I, I always liked him. Fuck. Anyway. Um, I thought so, you were the one who posted that thing from five years ago yesterday. Was that your tweet or someone else's? You posted some know. message into a group chat yesterday about how they seemed fake, or Eli said he oh. seemed, they seemed fake, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, <laughs> Auburn was 100% correct on that. <laughs> and everybody that was six died. years ago. Who's, who's laughing now? We are, I guess. Is he going? Is he coming back anytime soon? Um, I talked to him a couple of months ago. He was working on another film. I don't know if he finished the movie that he was working on when he like quit. He was doing. Um, I think it was called Betrayer. And it was almost done, and Unearth was going to release it. The Sadist? The... I don't know well, if he ma finished... The... I don't know. Masker Video has one, and apparently will never, ever release it. That's The Sadist, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Um, I like Adam. I don't care what anybody says about him. He's I don't know. He's been... He's always been great to me and super nice. So yeah. I look forward to seeing more movies from him. So again, we're not going to do, we're going to do reviews. We're not really reviewing anything on this episode, but we are for the second episode. And then here on out, we will have reviews, but we're not doing screeners again, because fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> It's just Chuck has enough screeners to do without without worrying about him for here. 
basically. Well, that was part of the that was part of the good thing because we were getting the same shit back then. (laughs) So we were both (laughs) able to watch the same stuff. Yeah, it's easy to get burned out when you got like a lot of movies coming in constantly, which I get burned out now. But luckily, due to the quarantine, a lot of stuff got shut down, so I was able to uh, catch up on most stuff. So I'm kind of like even with it now, at least till now. I've got a bunch of stuff in right now that came in that I don't know when I'm going to be able to get to all of it. But besides that, though, it, it, it does get stressful when you got a lot of stuff coming in, and they all want it on certain times. Anything that we do discuss, since this is YouTube and there are things in the bottom that you can put links for in the description, like we'll put any movies we talk about. Um, I'll link Chuck's YouTube page if you want to watch Zombie Zone Podcast and Chuck and unboxing action figures. I've got a bunch over here that need to be unboxed right now. But uh, most cases, I'll put links to like Amazon and Diabolic because we're all still big fans of Diabolic DVD. And maybe other companies in special cases if we're talking about their sales or something like that. Yes. Don't, don't Jesse have Melancholy the Angel coming out this July? What is Which, it now? Melancholy what? the Angel. I think that's what how you pronounce it. It's like the number two on the limited releases they've been releasing. A Diabolic, which is supposed to be like a pretty pretty hardcore film, pretty hardcore deal, because I've seen people that have seen it that says it's pretty rough to watch. Is that um, from Cauldron Films? I don't know. I doubt full. I think we would have heard about it by now. Is it something that he's releasing, or just something he's yeah, going to be carrying? It's, it's, it's something he's putting out, like the last thing he put out that we talked about that one time. What was it? The uh, What was that one he put out? Over here somewhere. Diabolical one, Freak Maker out. Yeah, okay. It's like... it's like An American Tire. And this is number two. Okay. Because Jesse um, at Diabolic is doing Cauldron Films, which I figured we'd talk about at some point, but essentially they've got two releases already for pre-order. Um, Abracadabra, which is like a uh, modern Jallo. Or, a, I don't know if it's a modern Jallo. I know some people have already seen the film. But, uh, it's a Jallo. And what's the what's the second one? American uh, rickshaw or American tiger, depending on who you're buying from. Right. It's a it's, I think it's some action movie I think from like eighties or nineties. I want to say Michael Dudikoff's in it, but I could be wrong on that. I have to look at it for a second. But Sergio Martino directed. Yeah. It's got Donald yes, Pleasant in it. It's, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, have, I have misspoke. It doesn't sound pleasant. It's Mitchell Gaylord. Um, but yeah, it's Miami college student finds himself framed for the murder of an evangelist son, hooks up with an Asian witch and a stripper to find the real killer and clear his name. That sounds like fun. But it's one of those... As I was saying, it's one of those like American Ninja kind of movies in a way. Except, yeah, Sergio Martino. Nobody can see that, but that's uh, that's what I'm talking about. Melancholy Dirt. It's E N G E L. No, but nobody so, can see that, Chuck. Nobody can see that. But Jesus. that's it. Well, I mean, what can you do about it? I mean, it's just like. It's just, <laughs> it's, but that's it. It's a Marion Dora movie. I think I think he made Carcinoma too. So I know that name. One thousand Marion slipcase. You mean D O R E? I don't know. I just closed the email. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, it, that's what he's working on uh, coming out this summer, and it's got like a number two on the spine, and the Freak Maker was number one, so it's in that series, whatever that is. I'm assuming. I still haven't decided if I wanted to buy Freak Maker. Do you like Donald Pleasant? Because he's in it. Sh- sure. I mean. Um, I did. It's good for what it is, but it wasn't really like my personal type of movie. I mean, you know, I like stuff a little bit different than that, but it's well made though. Um, I kind of want to get it just to support Jesse, but um, yeah. like I don't know. I've spent a shitload of money mostly because of James and Dead Rat, Dance Commander on that vinegar syndrome. So. Did you buy Red? Hey, hey, mostly it's I that last thing, not us. I've never seen have. Rad, so at least if I don't like it, or if it's just 
not like nostalgic enough for me since I'd never seen it that I'm aware of. I can most likely resell it and at least get what I paid for Which it. Which movie? Red. Which 4K? I did get the 4K. Oh, yeah. Isn't there it's, an NES game called Rad? I'm sure there was. It probably, it probably would have been a Super NES game timeline-wise, but I'm sure there was. I was seeing some people saying they were having issues with the uh, the Rad 4K disc that they'd gotten, but people were saying, I think, that that was because they weren't using their player properly. So... Seems like a false alarm so how, far. How, how could that happen? How could you use that player wrong? You pop a disc in. So, so apparently, play. one person, one person was apparently using like the audio setting was supposed to be for surround or something, but he didn't have surround, so it messed with his audio or vice versa, something like that. So this is what happened. Everybody got their stimulus money and they bought a surround system that they don't know how to use. That's what happened. Or a four K player. All right. All right. I just got a four K player. Yeah. I got an Xbox One, so mine's built in. My region-free DVD player, Blu-ray player, just kind of died on me. So uh, Jesse told me to go check out 220 Electronics, and I bought an LG 4K player that's region-free Blu-ray and DVD, and it works awesome. I don't have to, like, type in nine numbers on my remote and eject the disc tray and close it to make it uh, region hack and change it. I mean, it's, it's best if you can get something like that. I mean, when I was reviewing, they directed me, I guess you'd say, to like a 40 buck or at most it was like 100 bucks region-free DVD player. I just haven't had the time to get around to finding a Blu-ray one. And then I never had anything to watch on it because they only gave it to me so I could review Martin from Arrow and Big Tits Zombie from Terracotta Distribution. See, Martin still needs to come out on Blu-ray in America, don't it? Yeah, it's probably alongside all the other George Romero stuff they're 4 k Yeah, which, you know, that one place is now, was the second site, it's putting out the big 4K down mm-hmm. the box set. Mm-hmm. Which, you would think an American version wouldn't be far behind, but you never know. So, I don't know what country it's from, but there is a Steelbook Chainsaw Massacre 4K, and it's apparently supposed to look amazing. Well, it, if anybody has a 4K player and wants to check it out, you can because it ain't 4K region free everywhere. It is. Yeah. That's good. Supposedly, I'm, I'm looking at the information right now, but they're supposed to be doing uh, 4K Beetlejuice for Halloween. I just saw that, and there's, I think, two editions. There's like a Digibook. Yeah, and there's a regular and a deluxe. Yeah. The deluxe the looks, deluxe like, looks the like the. Handbook. You got First it, yeah. Deceased, yeah. Did, uh, also, it comes with the Beetlejuice poster. What, Chuck? The Goonies. Did that 4K ever come out? Mm-hmm. Not yet. It's, I was looking at on Best Buy last night. I just ordered Jaws. And I ordered Mayhem for $7. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 I, have, I have Mayhem and Jaws, which, yeah, you know. The Beetlejuice, good, it's, like, it's got um, a little dark patch chalk. Chalk? Uh, and a Beetlejuice poster. Do you, ever, do you ever think we'd be living in a world where Zombie and Maniac would be on 4K? It, Blue Underground's in the world. I'm more surprised by Daughters of Darkness than those two. Like, I'd say three years ago, I never would have said, like, even, fuck, longer than three years ago, I never would have been like, Zombie doesn't need a, a Blu ray disc. Zombie looks great. Uh, essentially, the <laughs> like, Blue Underground, like, DVD looked great the shriek show looked awful yeah then the anchor but, bay one looked pretty rough too yeah but um that 4k looks beautiful it's crazy it does it does and you know maniac looks good but i don't know like i've seen people saying it's like the greatest looking thing ever and uh i don't know i don't know what i expect but I don't think maybe, maybe it looks good, but I don't think it looks like like the greatest thing ever. Maybe it does Maniac. You know, it's Maniac. It's kind of like asking if Evil Dead will look good in 4K. It's what Evil Dead. Know? Think about what it... Well, I'm saying, think about it, what it would be filmed on, you know? Well, um, yeah. Well, I mean, Chuck gave me... Evil Dead 4K. Chuck gave me Evil Dead 2 4K uh, voodoo code, and it looks awful. You think it looks awful? I don't think it looks good at all. 
Is it is it actually in 4K? I don't know. You gave me the damn code. Because I redeem my no, dog. No, no, it's a, it's a UHD. <laughs> uh, the code you gave me is UHD, so yeah. Well, I redeem my Jaws UHD, uh, you know, 4K disc, and it's not in UHD. It's only in HD for some reason. I went looking for this little teeny tiny mini DVD of Zombie to show you, Chuck, but uh, yeah. I don't know where I put it. It's like hmm. this big. Did, did Vincent sell all of his copies of Zombie? I don't know. Because, um, you know, he had uh, all the hoodoos and all that stuff. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't know, would you? We talk, we text maybe sometimes two or three times a week, sometimes two or three times a month. What, what's he even doing these days? Though? Well, the hospital that he was working at, they shut down. Like, right before quarantine happened here in West Virginia. So, I know he was unemployed for a while. I don't know what he's doing now, but I think he is... Um, Look at working on a um, like a second master's degree. Yeah. So good for him. He got married. Getting, up there. getting the side project to a side there project. Age. Yeah. You know, can't be a punk rocker forever. Tell him that. Well, tell a lot so of punk rockers that. that right? As I said, let's be honest. Tell half the punk rockers that way. But usually they're millionaires by now, though, right? No. Iggy Pop and all those guys. Well. Maybe Iggy. When you're Iggy Pop, then you, then you transition into uh, acting, and he's already done that. So, so do we have any actual news, or is it just that the horror? Oh yeah, I got, burning? I got I got headlines. I'm not gonna go deep into it, but I got headlines. I mean, I mentioned Daughters of Darkness. They announced that 4K today, but I'm I surprised we didn't talk about that. That Synapse is doing uh, Living Dead in Manchester Moor. Three disc. Three disc. Still not still with slip right? cover. I Limited don't the, believe so, no. Limited to 6,000, right? It might be a 4K right? scan, but it's... Yeah, limited to 6,000, and it's a, it's a 4K scan, but not a 4K Blu-ray. Yeah, I mean... Um, I'd like to I'm, be more torn I'm still going to buy it, fuck. I thought, though... And then, uh, Scream... I still do. Uh, Scream Factory is doing Event Horizon, plus they're re-releasing the first volume of the Vincent Price collection with a new transfer for Mask of the Red Death, I believe. And they did release in the one movie. Version of it also, with like, they're also, yeah, they're also releasing Mask of the Red Death on its own in case you already have the collection and want the new transfer. So they're doing the whole collection again. Plus they said the vintage advertisements. Yeah, they're doing the whole collection and the movie separately as well. Plus, they said that if uh, they said that uh, they can't do the vintage introductions they used to have anymore, I guess copyright or something. So they're gonna do new features on it too, I guess. Which that's really shitty to do to people who've already bought the set in that case. But hopefully, there won't be that many new things on it. And then, of course, Arrow's doing Pitch Black and Flash Gordon, 4K and not 4K. So that's like that's Arrow's first 4K is pitch black, right? The argument could be made that the first 4K could have been Flash Gordon or pitch black since they're both doing both at the same time. Well, I've, never, I've never seen pitch black. It's okay. It's okay. The other thing about it also is, I mean, they gave Flash Gordon the whole splayed out open, you know, special edition with poster and everything else. They just gave pitch black a different cover art. If, if you've seen Reddit. Don't base your opinion on Pitch Black on Reddit because it's I, you completely... know what? I've not watched any of them. If I'm gonna be honest, Pitch Black's like a pretty good sci-fi horror flick, and Riddick is not. Well, it's like a more like an action sci-fi flick. Okay. I said you said something about there being a Friday the Thirteenth set that uh, Scream Factory is supposed to work on. Oh yeah. Where'd you like... get that from? I got nothing. Well, I can't say sources on that, but uh, when I did the video of it, I was just, I was assuming it was coming, but I have pretty well confirmed that it is coming now. Uh, what I've heard about it is it's basically new scans on everything, a better version, you know, a real 3D version of part three. Um, it, but now I heard that they're, they're not sure if like Freddy versus Jason or the remake are going to be part of that set though. 
I mean, wouldn't I don't surprise care me. And we can get rid of the old Jason. Days. I'll take the remake. Yeah, well, the, well, the thing is, in the olden oh. days, it was, the thing is, in the olden days, it was always the sets were here's the eight Universal one, or sorry, Paramount ones, and then hey, look, here's a box set with uh, X goes to hell and Freddy vs. Jason. So if that's the same rules they're going for that way, it wouldn't be any different than usual. That's why the ten was so cool when it came out because it had everything, but it didn't have the unrated Jason goes to hell, and the unrated Jason goes to hell will be on this set when it comes out. From Chuck sources, so you know it's you know this is all accurate. Oh, this is one hundred percent on the yeah. I I I put anything on. And I've got the Severin. It's part of all their sale prep. Something Franco's coming. Something Fulci's coming. Most people think it's Daemonia. They're re-releasing in some way, shape, or form uh, last year's exclusive. We're not printing it again. Uh, Blood on Satan's Claw as well as they're redoing Beast Must Die with apparently a new transfer, a new slipcover. Um, and then also as part of that, they're doing Intervision stuff, and they announced uh, Frankie and his pals in a limited to 1,000 uh, run for that, for the sale at the end of the month. Has anybody heard of that before? Hell no. <laughs> well, but, they just go ahead and throw Combat Shock out there. You know, I bought that last set. I paid money for that one. But to be fair... You were smart. A lot of, especially when they first started doing the Intervision, a lot of the Intervision shit that I had not heard of before. I mean, that's mostly Intervision in a nutshell. But that Intervision was cool, though, because that's like, that was things would come through Intervision. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, was it Sledgehammer was Intervision? Things, yep. Sledgehammer, Burning Moon. Oh, yeah, Burning Moon. I've still got that. I mean, and, I they just... did, uh, and they did VHS tapes for those releases, too. Yeah, yes. yeah, that was that was like that was the cool stuff. But and they did like one of the last releases they did was they did like uh, was it Suffer the Little Children, which is like yeah, a, Suffer Little Children, yeah. Well, which if you've not seen that, I advise you to get that because apparently nobody realized their kids were making a horror movie while they were making it. I don't think. Uh, last thing they did was actually a Blu-ray. It was a Mass Mutilator. Yeah, yeah, it's a wrestling movie. I don't, I did, I don't have that one though. But I'm surprised. I've heard mixed, I've heard mixed things about it. Though. That was something I just wanted your thoughts on, which is, and it's kind of driving me crazy, and everyone's all shocked about it, which is everybody keeps talking about how AMC is going under. We're talking about going under and saying they won't air, uh, I think it's Paramount's movies anymore, but the big story is how drive-ins are coming back, and I'm like, of course drive-ins are coming back. It's a quarantine. You get to go to a, you get to go to a movie. You're in your car, so you can be as loud as you want. You can use your cell phone as much as you want and not bother anybody else. You know, keep your kids quiet in your own car and interfere with anybody else. What? We have three drive-ins here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why. A, I don't understand why everyone's so shocked about that. And B, I still have never understood why they went away in the first place. I mean, um, I don't know, but I think like it was. It wasn't Paramount they got mad at. It was Universal. Ah, uh, my fault. Because they did like the Invisible Man and all that stuff and put it on VOD. No, no. What pissed them off was Trolls. They well, got mad that may be, maybe more than one company. I don't know. Yeah, Paramount was the big one because Paramount came out and said, "Oh, look, we put Trolls and World Tour out on streaming, and it did this much money." And AMC went, uh, "If you guys are seriously thinking about not putting movies in theaters anymore, we're not carrying your movies because screw you on that." But apparently, they're bearing oh, enough there issues like, no. keeping their own theaters open. We rented is that. I, I did not watch it, but my kids watched. Huh. Within, I think, the two days that you get to watch something when you rent it, um, mm. I think they watched it like three or five times. Wouldn't shock me. That's how kids movies tend to work. It's probably half right. why they made so much money. But uh, right now rental. they're watching the new Adams Family. Chuck gave me the uh, code to that, and I haven't. Yeah. It looks awesome. I've only seen like the first ten minutes of it, fifteen minutes or so, but um, they've watched it a dozen times and it looks great. Have you watched the new Scooby Doo yet? Yeah, and you know what? It's surprisingly good. I was really pissed off that they uh, took all the, the voice actors that do Scooby-Doo out. Um, yeah. Because Fred Welker's been doing Scooby-Doo since the 60s. Or he's been doing Fred's voice since the 60s. And he just started Fred doing... Yeah. yeah. He just started doing um, Scooby-Doo's like 10 years ago. 
so he does Scooby's voice in the movie, but Zac Efron does Fred because people. Because Zac Efron. Yeah. yeah. Um, Scooby Doo, Mr. Lillard doing Shaggy. It's fucking amazing. I've heard good things. Is Matthew Lillard is. doing Shaggy or is no? There like, is there no, no new movies at theaters right now? Like, there's no new ones at all? Well, no, there's the rumblings they're going to put Candyman out in September, but no one's sure about that yet. Because, like, everything around here is playing, like, Jurassic Park and Jaws and stuff. Yeah, exactly. They they tend to play, like, the very last things. Like, I know some of the ones that are opening up were saying they were playing a lot of Frozen 2. No. Well, I know... Uh, the one, the ones that are playing Jurassic Park and stuff, they were like doing free, like drive-ins, but it was free. You could go for free. They were doing that. I think the the only bad experience that I had really with a drive-in was they did, we had that uh, Mahoning drive-in, and I went to that, and they just expect you to be there so damn early, and so we're sitting there in like 70, 80 degree heat. And they won't even start the movie because it's like not even eight o'clock yet, and I'm like, I gotta get home. It's Pennsylvania; it's a three hour drive for me. You got three movies I'm supposed to sit through, and it's not even eight o'clock. You haven't started yet. That's about the only real issue with them for me. But a lot of horror movies are going back to drive-ins right now, so none of mine will get those. What's up, Chuck? Evil Dead coming back to drive-ins. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Great house, yeah, yep. Since they're talking about making a sequel to Evil Dead now, which is apparently going to be entitled Evil Dead Now, which like the worst title ever it works for trauma <laughs> well, well <laughs> evil dead. You got, like here's evil dead and here's, here's trauma. i know i know i, so, know, I don't know, I know. What's I resist the joke i'm sorry apparently bruce campbell ain't gonna have nothing to do with it which you know i thought he was he producing should. it well he's doing that i mean like he ain't gonna be he's in it producing. If you ain't in that right. Also, I've got that uh, I saw this earlier. Anders Engstrom. I have no idea who that is or what movie he's made, but apparently he's attached to remake Changeling. That was announced today. You know, so, Changeling's one of those movies that everyone loves, and I just think it's all right. I think it's boring. It's very fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's very That's boring. Not fun with- That's all I got, though. That, that we're discussing. That we're just, yeah. Because all you gotta do uh, is a quick Twitter search and you find out all the rest of the bullshit. I, f- I finished the new movie. Yes, yes, you did. It's called Screwdriver, which after it gets made and after it gets burnt, we'll have the copies for, for sale. We're still, and then we're gonna try to find distribution. You, know, we, you, you always sell first. So you can make money off of it. Then you just then you find distribution later on. Because you don't make any money when it's See, distributed. Good. Yeah. Now you have the rights back to Morbid from Wild Eye, right? Yep, I do. You could always do the extra cast <laughs> exclusive release. Yeah. Well, the the Blu-ray release that come out that was limited actually had the extra uh, extra cast commentary on. It. I don't have that. You don't have that. I don't have one of those. I don't have I just one. have the streaming copy you gave me at some point. I don't even have the movie itself. Well, I think I've got I mean, two two DVD copies of Morbid, but I don't think I have the Blu-ray. All I have. But do you have the VHS copy from Laser Paladin Video? I do. I actually got one. <laughs> but but like here's I don't have the thing any of though. Shit. Uh, <laughs> the problem with the Blu-ray is for some reason it's in full screen instead of widescreen. I don't know why. Who made those? Uh, my friend Bob made those. So that's why. Point and shoot. <laughs> I mean, Bob. I, I was figuring. I figured it was going to be now. you, and we were going to place the blame on you. But Bob, yeah. Bob works, I guess. Bob's house burned down <laughs> recently, so I don't think we can ever get those, you know, fixed. Do you? Uh, do you still have the commentary file? Yeah. Yeah, I do. You might have to send me that because, I mean, I would have had to have recorded that, and I don't have that. Yeah, yeah, I've I've got it. You and uh, you and Vincent giving like your your thoughts on, on me. Like you guys actually sound like you're trying to find a deeper meaning in the movie. That's that's Eli for you. Yeah. Sure is. 
Um, I mean, you already found the lost episode of ExtraCast recently, so. I did. Um, <laughs> and I listened to about half of it. I don't think there's any music in it at all. So I will probably actually upload that in just audio form to YouTube. Um, was I on that show? Yes, you were. Yeah, it was the three of us. We were going to do like a oh. whole, like in the, the, right there when Scream Factor was getting to their height, we were just going to start doing some of the lesser known movies that they were um, releasing. Maybe not lesser known because we, we started off with like Night of the Comet. It's not a lesser known film, but. It's I not know really... we did Night of the Comet. We did Ninja 3 Domination. I can't remember the other one we did. I don't know. I just remember. I know it's just we released it. Hadn't gotten through it, but I'll post that. And extracast.com is still a thing. So if you don't have like iTunes or something and you want to listen to any of the old shows, you can go back and do that. And then I think we were fucking even writing reviews when I was getting burnt out at the end. I was outsourcing reviews to um, Dead Rat and Dance Commander. Was you were mostly doing records. like news stories, weren't you? Well, we always posted. Um, Press release headlines. Press release. Stories. Thank you. Yeah. Press release. Oh, yeah. Press release. Yes. Like, I, yeah, I, I do press release. I, they're easy. All you got to do is just. I, all I did was just. Did you hate doing press shit. releases? Copy and paste. But then you look unprofessional because then you got places that's like, we don't copy and paste our news here. Well, hey, I, this was extracast. It's We're not <laughs> professional. We claim that. I don't think nobody's coming. Nobody comes to your side. I don't think to read press releases anyway. I think they just come just to look at reviews. <laughs> the only people that come to yeah. read the press releases are the people that send you the press releases. I mean, I'm on Chuck's side on this one, so I can't help you there. <laughs> Whenever I had a press release, something that I, have to, I try to add something else to it. I like used it. to, and then I quit. You know, I figured at this point, why bother? <laughs> I've been I've been doing this like 11 years now, 12 years now. It's um, it, there's only so many hours a day. Speaking of Scream Factory, look at this little coaster. Yeah. yeah. Didn't you get that at a mm -hmm. convention, or did that get something, or that come with something? How did that go? They used to do that all the time. I've got a pile of them. The first year they did their Summer of Fear, um, if you placed an order over something, you got a set of them. My kids ruined most of them, but yeah. I've got a sealed. I've got a sealed set over here on the shelf. They need to do a year of fear going by some of those prices of some of that stuff they've been putting out. Well, their I mean, sales still aren't very cheap. At least, like, they just make no, they're not. At least that cell vinegar syndrome just did, like, nearly everything was 10 or 12 bucks. Right. Yeah. I mean, that this is pretty much what I wanted to cover for the most part in this first episode, just kind of getting back into it. But, um,. Anything that you guys have watched recently that you've liked, hated? I, I really liked One Cut of the Dead. I liked it a lot. That was good. Way better than I thought it was going to be. Which, you know, it's odd enough because, like, I got it, like, days after I... I knew I was getting it, man, I got the still book of it. But a few days before I got it, Joe Bob showed it, so I ended up watching it on Joe Bob's thing first. But the... Uh, the Blu-ray actually has a dub version, if anybody wants to watch the dub version, and it has a uh, GoPro version. GoPro version. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I think most Kronos. people are very confused when they watch that movie, especially after like the first 30 minutes, the first time credits start the roll, I ain't going to spoil anything. People get extremely confused about what's going on. Yeah, but, like, uh, my wife kind of hated really, it at first. Yeah, I mean, it's really good at first. The middle, I can see where people might have an issue with the middle because it kind of just sets up everything else. But I think the way everything kind of comes together is during the last act is what sells it, really. And, you know, if you've ever made a movie, it, you can relate to some of that. James, anything you've I saw seen recently? Kronos for the first time, the first Del Toro movie. You can tell who he's going to be. He's still green around the edges, but it's definitely still his kind of world. Um, Why well, can I also watch Train to Busan for the first time? We found out that so it's so good. And since they keep talking about how they now have an extended cut, they're going to put out in theaters because they're doing a sequel. You might have a chance to see it, but the original version of it is fantastic. 
Um, I have it on Blu-ray. I've just on Shutter, there's a an animated prequel called Soul Station. I was say we. Oh, we tried to watch that. That that ain't great. That's not great. <laughs> we tried to watch that afterwards, but yeah, the, the, the stick with the stick with the main movie. Um, that and plus uh, Knives Out, Ready or Not. Ready or Not's way better than Knives Out in my mind, but Ready or Not definitely. Uh, and also, I'm just gonna sit here and show for Cockneys versus Zombies. I was gonna review it eventually for the for my uh, WordPress. Never got around to it. I still maintain it is the most British zombie comedy. And I know what I'm saying with that. And I also think it's probably the funniest. But that's that's just me on that. I we reviewed Cockneys vs. Zombies a long time ago on this show, on the last show. But I think it was uh, Eli and I that did it. I've got a um, mm-hmm. I've got a Blu-ray from the UK. I've I have the Chef Factory one. Yep, yeah. that one. Doghouse. Um, and I like when it's not great. But I feel like that that girl is kind of playing the same character in every movie she's in now. No, you get typecast. Uh. Also, I steadfastly say that Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is a really good movie. I know you guys don't agree as much on that one as I do, but yeah. I enjoyed nah. it. Yeah. Okay, good. They try to get too complicated with it. I kind of liked the expansion of the myth of this idea. Too much story. They should have just been an anthology dealing with the short stories, in my opinion. Uh, I liked it. You know, boys, I revisited like I, I, so I kind of like the... Hmm? He's holding up body, body double. double. Watch out. I revisited it. Oh, oh in yeah. years. One of the palm was best. Agree or getting you? into stuff that you I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, Blood Rage. Oh. I like see. Blood Rage. I mean it's it's, it's, it's Hey, it's a you mean it's a movie. you said Blood Rage? You mean like the old slasher movie Blood Rage? I mean the old slasher. Yes, I liked Thanks. it. I'm sorry. It's a Thanksgiving movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like it better now than I did when I first seen it. Of course, the same could be said for Mutilator. I didn't like Mutilator as much when I first seen it than I, as I do now. Of course, now you can see the movie now when you got the Blu-ray. I have a Mutilator original one sheet here, Chuck. That's autographed for you. Yeah, you're supposed to send that to me. You're supposed to send it to me. Why didn't you? I just now remember that. Why didn't you send that? I think I was holding it hostage along with that 555 VHS because I'd never gotten anything from you. That's a shame. That, that's awful. It's, uh, it's actually right over here in a box. That's a sign. You know, your post office is open tomorrow. Y'all just, you know, drop it in. I could. And that's a sign for the record of uh, the times that you're talking about a 555 VHS and where we're at in concept on VHS now. Chuck said, hey, I don't have any money. Can you get me one of those 555 tapes? (laughs) I said, sure. It's still upstairs on a bookshelf. But you always get a free copy of one of my movies when they come out, though, right? Mm. Most of the time you guys are producing most of the time, right? I think I bought the last movie. No, door one. I think so. No, I don't you gave I... me a free one. You you definitely did not. If you gave money to its production, like I did, and like Dead Rat did, you probably got a Blu-ray. Cause that's what I got. Even if I think you had I have to remind me, even if you had to remind me later to send it, I had to go through my distri- distribution person for that and have them to send you those the Blu-rays. Maybe you did send it to me for free. I don't know. Yeah, like I had to remind you to use the tagline I suggested. <laughs> see, see there. That's that's like, you know, that's like that's like good as gold right there. Giving you a free copy of my movie. <laughs> you know, no James gets a free copy of the new one because James sent me some retro WWE figures. Not too long. Yes, ago. I'll take that. <laughs> That's, that's all it takes. I can get to a, a free five, copy of Chuck's I can get movie. to a five below more easy. Hey, look, by doing that, I saved Chuck about 15 bucks. 15 bucks go. goes to the movie. There you go. There it is. There it is. 
I even waved the shipping fee. Oh, oh there you go. So I watched, uh, because of Chuck, I rented VFW for 99 cents on Vudu. And I friggin' loved it. And I bought I the do, 4K like at Walmart the other night for 10 bucks. 10 bucks? 9.99. I heard uh, I heard it don't look much better than the Blu-ray, but the only reason I have the Blu-ray is because my Walmart didn't carry the 4K. Also, oh, what the what was it? The Omen collection. Yeah, I bought the Omen collection recently. I still haven't even opened it yet. I kind of yeah. only really like the first movie, I, so Yeah. Part 2's okay. Part 2's okay. I watched you know, Damon The is, Lodge. Damon's coming into his own on whether or not he's evil or not by the second one. You know, like, he's got this choice to make, whether he's going to go down this path or this path. And, he, you know, he, obviously which path he goes down. But and I then in the third one, he's Sam Neill, so you know which path he chose. They're right. He's Sam Neill, right so now. he chose the correct path. <laughs> the, whole, the only reason to get that set, though, for real, though, is probably part four, because it wasn't in the original Omen set. It was in the original DVD set, but not the Blu-ray set. Exactly, and you know, only Blu-ray and above here. You know, we don't we don't talk about DVDs much. <laughs> much, yeah. So they, they... I watched the Lodge. Chuck has it on his Vudu, but it's also on Hulu. If anybody listening actually or watching wants to see it, I'm not watching. It is really good, and fuck, is it depressing. Like that's the interpretation I got from the interview I read. Holy shit! I didn't expect that ending at all, and it like I don't think I want to watch it now. I don't think I want to watch it now. I think you have to because you probably have to review it. No, you know how I got that. Somebody on Facebook was trying to give somebody the voodoo code of it, but they posted it wide open on their timeline instead of by message. <laughs> so you caught it before that person did. Yep. Uh, I did. I'm a sorry person. I... You're a real piece of shit, Chuck. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> Don't tempt me with free voodoo code. Um, that and I, uh, I watched. I've watched a whole lot of the Shutter Originals while we were locked down on quarantine. But yep. the one that really blew me away was Boar, and I know we're going to review it at some point on here. Mm-hmm. But better than I, Razorback. Better than Razorback, yes. Um, Many things are better than Razorback. The two two of the main characters, and I can't think of his name, but he recently passed away. It was a uh, Mick from uh, Wolf Creek. So there's oh, there's, yeah, him. there's two older guys in it, and they are by far the two most likable characters that I've seen in a film, and probably in years. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. The guy from Wolf Creek died? Yes. Yeah, like three months ago. I didn't know this. Chucky, run a horror website. How did you know that? <laughs> they don't send me obituaries. <laughs> Remember, I'm the news finder, not him. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just know that, Wrong. sadly, he passed away. Look, now's the time they need to get the Blu-ray Wolf Creek out, okay? Because there still ain't one. There, there should be. Wolf Creek 2 didn't really do anything for me. No, but the first one's like the, still really good. Uh, have you guys ever, have you guys seen the TV show that was on it's Shutter? It's terrible. Is it? It's still there. Season one's off. That's, that's, that's a bummer. I've got season one. It's, it's not good. Hey, Chuck, I have to ask you this because yeah. I just saw an ad for a Wild Eye movie called Ouija Mummy. Do, uh, you, yes. still talk to, do you still talk to Rob at all? Rob Didn't Rob, they also do Rob Ouija uh, Shark? <laughs> like there, there's Ouija Guys, too. They re, they released Ouija Guys, too. But I don't understand. Like, like Rob, me and Rob were, like, still at least talking to him. And then just all of a sudden, he just stopped replying. He won't talk to him. So I don't know what oh. problem he had now. You, I think you got the wrong guy. John Jarrett's still alive. I think you're thinking of the killer from High Tension. Oh, really? Oh. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly. That's bad, but at least it's not the other guy, right? 
I'll double check that. I think he's That's the guy who died. Uh, it, it's, it's bad either way, but I'm happy it's not the Wolf Creek guy because I think they can still do some Wolf Creek movies and you know have some some yards left in those. But yeah, apparently they're also doing um, Ouija Ouija uh, Shark. So maybe they're going for like a whole uh, franchise. It's yeah. Ouija everything. See, I've got I've got all these bad Ouija movies, but I gotta get Ouija guys, and I gotta get the other Ouija one you're talking about. John Jarrett is still alive. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Now, now I'm, I'm almost, happy he's still alive. I'm almost positive that's what you're thinking. I'm trying to check on that. Oh, I'm glad he's still alive. Yeah, still Philippe Nahon. He died on April 19th. Oh, that dude, that dude from high tension like, really old, buddy. I don't know how I would have gotten he, these two confused. Like, I have no I fucking idea how I would have gotten confused. He was pretty old. Yeah, he was almost 100. He was getting up there. He was in his 80s, I think. Jesus. Yeah. He was, he he was, was in his 80s, 80s almost. I'm surprised Scream Factory hasn't put out high tension. Was that like a Lionsgate movie or something? I think it was. Scream Lionsgate. Factory doesn't like to do collector's editions of anything that isn't British in terms of foreign film. Yeah. At least that's my that's been my experience so far. I mean, is there a Blu-ray of Frontiers anywhere? No. Maybe in another country, but not in America. I think the director of Frontiers has something on the Shutter Original. I could be wrong. Uh, speaking, you talking about Shadow Angels? Have you uh, watched the creep? Have you watched the Creep Show TV show yet? I watched the Not first yet, but... two or three episodes, and some of them I liked, and some of them I really didn't at all. I like I like <laughs> them. The majority of them I liked them for the most part, but uh, I don't like 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 Chief Woodenhead makes like a cameo appearance. In a, a weird form, in like, the, is it the first episode? I think maybe the second, the second story, of the first episode, and I kind of don't like what they did with it. So first of all, just so you know, uh, he died of a unrelated illness that was made worse by that word we can't say <laughs> on YouTube, apparently. Um, yeah, uh, can't say that. I said that already. So funny, well, let me rephrase that. You can say it, you just won't get monetized. So, yeah, he died uh, from complications of an existing illness that came from COVID-19. Well, uh, um, luckily, for my accent, they won't know what I said anyway, so. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Um, speaking of shows like that that have references and things, uh, because everything was free because of the quarantine for at least some period of time, I got CBS All Access for a bit and watched four episodes of the new Twilight Zone. Anybody else? No, but Dance Commander said I, I it's really it's good. Hit, it's hit and miss. It's, it's hit and miss. It, it's like the episodes all feel okay. They don't necessarily feel quite on the level of like the original stuff. Something almost always seems to hold it back a bit. But it seems okay. Well, I liked what me, they did with... Um, mm -hmm. No, I just say I liked what they did with... Um, Terror at 30,000 feet. That one was a good one. Yeah. But if you buy the Blu-ray, there's a black and white option, which kind of... Yeah, I'm looking to get into that because it should make it kind of more interesting. I plan on watching it eventually, but uh, I haven't got around to it. You know, oh, oh, Tom Savini directs an episode of uh, that creep show TV show. The I saw, the I think, the first... Like I said, the first two or three, but the only one I really enjoyed was the first one. Had um, the gray matter, and that felt like an original yeah. creep show, like from the movies to me. And some then, of them um, feel like the real thing, and some don't. And um, I still like the one with the dollhouse and the the little zombie head. Yeah, yeah, that was just that was just a little bit weird, though. You know what I mean? It like, was definitely I feel weird. like it just didn't like it wasn't like that. That's the one with DJ Qualls in it. Don't believe so. Creep show, you mean? He's a uh, yeah. The creep show episode with DJ Qualls is like the, the guy from the new guy, the real skinny, weird looking dude. He had an episode that was really good. I don't, I don't know. I watched them right when they Finger. first it's called the Finger. when they first came out. So I don't remember really anything other than I didn't care for the second episode for sure. After, after the first time I hear his elevator, I envision somebody pulling these big chains down like this. You know, you laugh, but that's basically how the thing worked for God knows how long, because it kept stopping and dropping people off the wrong floor, and if you push to go to one floor, it'd drop you instead of bringing you up. 
I took it's a new elevator, elevator too. This this is what I do. Yes, this is a new building. This is a new elevator, and it took them like months and multiple visits mm-hmm. to even figure out something was going on. Basically, it's not like you live in like one of Charles Band's castles. No. No. <laughs> No. Hey, what was it supposed to be like? Are they doing like thirteen movies right now? Coronavirus. He was do- He was working on thirteen things, but they weren't all being done at the same time. He just announced he was doing them, and they were going to kind of go like boom, 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 boom. That being said, he kind of sidetracked that to hop on the Tiger King bandwagon. Oh, yeah, but it's easy to hop on those bandwagons when all they're doing is taking old movies and redubbing them, right? You know, Bruno Matai doesn't deserve a lot of respect and a lot of credit, but how dare you do that to Hell of the Living Dead? <laughs> well, the funniest part was is there was a character that does look like Dario Argento that they're called Argento in the dub, though. I don't give them enough credit to think they did that for that reason, though. That's a level above their usual writing style. Yeah, yeah. I just don't watch. Yeah, is that you don't watch? You didn't watch it? You got no. the link? You didn't watch it? No. Yeah, I got the link. I watched. And I, it. I, I got bored. I think I one. posted it. And I'm pretty sure Dead Rat watched it, but I no. He can have my. He can have my digital screener of that that they still send me I didn't digital screeners. Actual Tiger King. I think I sent him that too. What movie was it making fun of in that one? Anybody check? I have no idea if they did or not. From the fact they say that they had their two random actresses in it, I would halfway think that they actually legitimately made us something that would could conceivably, if you squint at it, call it a movie. That well, one. Those girls. They did a wrap around for the. They did like a wrap around for the Hell to Live and Dead one. He didn't say what it was, so maybe they did do something else. In which case, I mean. It's got to be something they've got the rights to. And it's got to be something that yeah. since they're claiming that they had to go to Africa to uh, save the Tiger King, um, Hollywood. you'd expect it have to be some kind of cannibal thing. Well, apparently they got the blessing of the guy that owns Blue Underground to use Hell to Live in the Dead, though. William Lustig, Lustig again? William Lustig. He must have... Maybe they paid him. I like, I like Bill Lustig, like you said exactly. I'm pretty sure they said, "Here's a check." Um, and that's why we're getting Daughters of Darkness to... on Blu-ray on 4K. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Daughters of Darkness paid for by Corona Zombies. To use Maniac. <laughs> Expect an additional credit at the beginning. Special thanks to Charles Band. <laughs> He just started I selling like I have, uh, I don't think I owned Puppet Dark. Master masks for his quarantine. For COVID. Yep. Uh, yep. It's Puppet Master, Parasite. There's one of those that's part of the group. There's like two or three para- Puppet Master ones, one Parasite one. And then also Grindhouse uh, releasing has a, a I, um, what is it? I eat your skin. I eat your skin mask yeah. that they're selling. Uh, metal band. I found mask now. Um, cattle decapitation did a mask at the start of quarantine, and it's pretty much got everything that's wrong with America on it at the moment. And the Tiger King was on the mask, along with like, white supremacists and a few other things. But uh, the other side of the mask is literally an asshole. <laughs> that's the that, that tracks. There's not a lot of masks being worn around. Maybe where you are. This is also the same guy talking at the height of the pandemic was out looking for uh, a WWE lunchbox at Walmart, so. No, this is also the same guy who... (laughs) This is the same guy who in the middle of the pandemic was taking uh, wrestling bumps in the middle of a ring, so... (laughs) My state, we've been doing wrestling shows for a month. But I've only been there. I know. That's my point. Yes, thank you. I didn't go when it first started. I waited after the restrictions got lifted a little bit. We uh, we encouraged him not to go. Yes. 
Because hey. at extra cast, we support social distancing, hence why we're all on audio games. That's right. That's why we're not in the same room together. It's not because we all live in different states. <laughs> look here, no, look here, never. Look here. But I went to Walmart to get supplies, okay? Because everybody had to go get supplies at some time or another. And just when I was there, I dipped off into the other aisle. That's not true. <laughs> Do Don't they have not, like set rocks you're supposed to take through Walmart? You just went. You went there literally just to find those things. That's the only reason you went, and you had to go back because you didn't find them all. Are you a lawyer? Can I speak to my <laughs> <laughs> He pleads the fifth. Well, I didn't get one. Got one. I didn't get one. Hmm. I'm going to get one though. All right. Well, I, I think this is a back 24 hours again. This is a pretty good stopping point. <laughs> I think Chuck Chuck went in Walmart back 24 hours. This is a good stopping point for the first episode. Yeah. Can we get a hat? <laughs> make Walmart 24 hours again. Make Walmart great again. No, make it 24 hours again. So again. Again. <laughs> again? I'm not, I'm, I don't. I don't support the Orange Goblin. So you know. Yeah, so that's the other thing about extra cash besides us supporting social distancing. There's other things we support. Things like black lives think, and other no, things like that. Sure. <laughs> things that the uh, the the, the extra cast horror podcast, they do not. Yes, apparently. So. You know what they say about people have, who have, have uh, clean Bible record. quotes on their Twitter bio? They, they, they got to show off too much, you know? Yeah. Anyway, we don't have an intro for these shows yet. We don't have an outro. So these shows are just I mean, these shows. you could add the music. You could add the music in, but you'd have to edit stuff. So That's true. Didn't that, uh, didn't you have that second theme like song you had at first? Wouldn't that, like, technically you had the rights to it because it was made for you by someone? Like the third theme song. That one, yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. I still have yeah. that. My, my best friend made that. So I do still have that on my external somewhere. So maybe we'll we'll work my with that, but it's not going to be on this episode. How many best friends do you have? I've got a lot of best friends, buddy. Chuck, <laughs> you're one of my best friends. Okay. I said friends, not best friend, so. Oh, okay, okay. There was a glitch. I didn't... <laughs> Anyway, uh, if anybody watched this, we do definitely appreciate it. And we've, again, been gone for four fucking years. So um, I at least know that there was one person excited to see me on Twitter. Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> and he responded with the hashtag one, shut one up, one Chuck. Million. I loved it. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, we're back. I remember. And uh, as soon as I hit this stop button, we're actually going to record episode two. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Guys, any last words? The power of cast compels you. That'll do.